Mr. Christian Nikeshko Omerje. You are welcome. Today, we shall be looking at motion for SS1 students. What did I say? Motion for SS1 students. Then, I have these objectives in mind. So, by the end of the lesson, students should be able to 1. Define motion. 2. List and explain types of motion. 3. Distinguish between distance and displacement. 4. Explain speed. Velocity and acceleration in relation to motion. And the last one, solve numerical problems relating to the topic we have today. Therefore, students, I believe you, you know how or you have heard of objects moving or even human beings moving about from one point to another. That means this topic we have today is something you have been doing even since you were born. Equally, you are familiar with scalars and vectors. So by way of introduction, the study of motion started long ago. It was Galileo Galilei in the 16th century and Isaac Newton who gave us the theory about our present understanding of motion. Therefore, by definition, motion can be defined as the change in the position of an object from one with respect to time. And then, in this lesson, we shall be paying more attention to the aspect of motion in which we do not study the forces causing the motion. We call it kinema kinematics. Then later on, you will look at or you will study dynamics, which involves the forces and even the motion itself. That will take us to types of motion. Types of motion. And then, my dear students, we have or we are going to look at the four types of motion. Number one, random motion. Repeat after me, random motion. And then if you look at the slide, you will see how the particles in that vessel move zigzag, irregularly, in different directions. And then it is in line with what we studied in Brownian motion. You move to form an object in a zigzag manner. Equally, I know you have been going to markets, and if you observe a very crowded market, you, you will see that the movement of people there are in irregular manner, which is random motion. So by definition, random motion can be defined as the zigzag movement of an object from one point to another, equal the gaseous materials move. And that will take us to the second type, we shall be looking at that is translation now, translation now. Or we call it linear motion. Then in this case, how do we define linear motion? Remember, the word linear simply means straight path or straight line. So when objects move in a straight line from one point to another, we call it translational or linear motion. What are the objects that can move in a straight line? I, you and I move in a straight line. You can throw an object to move in a straight line. And then in the slide, you see how the car is moving in a straight line from Oka to Onicha, and so on and so forth. Also, during games, you see how students run or engage in 100 meters, they run on a straight line. The top type, oscillatory, oscillatory or vibratory motion oscillatory or vibratory motion in this case this can be defined as the movement of an object to observe my hand to and then through so when objects move to and through about a fixed point we call it oscillatory or vibratory motion what are the common examples of course you enjoy swing or janglova so if you look up there in the slide, you see how that baby is swinging up and down, enjoying himself. Equally, during Children's Day celebration, which in Nigeria, it is celebrated on May 27th every year. As you parade during marching, your arms swing back and forth, which is a good example of oscillatory motion. Then the fourth one is a rotational motion. What did I say? Rotational motion. All right. By definition, it can be defined as the movement of an object around an orbit about a fixed point. 
Can you give me examples of objects that move around an orbit and then about a fixed point? The fan, good. If you observe the blades of a ceiling fan, for instance, something like this, blade 1 and 2, as the voltage is supplied, the blades will be rotating either clockwise or anti-clockwise, okay? Either clockwise or anti-clockwise, and in that case, it performs rotational motion. What other objects perform rotational motion? Even the air. And in the slide, you can equally see the tires of the car and the bicycle performing rotational motion. That will take us to the next item we have in the objective, which is the kinds of a motion. And today we shall be looking at we shall be looking at the two kinds of motion we have. Kinds of motion. The first one we look at a relative. Repeat after me, relative motion. And in this case, we have two cases to discuss. Case one is when the two objects, for instance, two objects moving in the same direction. The same was direction. And then, from the slide, you can see how I have structured it. When you have two lorries, A and B, this is lorry A moving towards my right hand side, and then lorry B also moves towards my right hand side. And that is where your knowledge of scars and vectors comes in. In this case, let's assume the speed of lorry A is 60 meters per second, and that of B is 50 meters per second. So let's it's not just scalar addition and subtraction. No, something happens here. Because by relative motion, we mean the apparent motion. What you observe from where you are now, and as I move from the I move around in the classroom. So, how do we analyze this? This time around, we shall now find the relative velocity of A with respect to B by just subtracting 50 from 60. We now say 60 minus 50 giving us 10 meters per second. At the moment in which A is trying to overtake B, we'll observe that there is a velocity change of what 10 meters per second. Then the second case, still under the relative motion, we have uh, two objects moving in the opposite direction. I will still use the lorry as an example. This time around, you need to assign by yourself maybe here should be positive because it's going towards my right hand side then B going towards my left hand side will become negative and if that is the case still go back to 60 meter per second as an example and then 50 meters per second here now here remember the knowledge of vector which I've told you when two vectors are moving in the opposite direction their magnitude is gotten by subtraction so you keep it there so the first one is what 60 write it then after this since I have assigned negative to this value, it becomes minus 50. Open a bracket, minus 50. Then solve this mathematics. You have 60 plus 50, giving us 110 meters per second. Good. From there, we go back to circular motion, which is the second kind of motion. Repeat after me, circular motion. I believe you are with me. So in circular motion, number two, circular motion. I believe you know what is a circle. Something that looks like this. Okay, it has a circumference. So if objects are made to move around this cyclic path, either clockwise, watch clockwise or anti-clockwise, we call it circular motion. What are the objects that are performed circular motion? Look clearly, you see that boy wheeling a ball around what? Around the cyclic path. You see that ball is performing circular motion. Now, how do, how then do you differentiate circular motion from rotational motion? One thing is important. In circular motion, the object is not located or fixed at the center. Unlike what you observe in that fan or the blaze of the fan fixed at the center. So that is the explanation under circular motion. The object is made to rotate around the circular part and it is not being fixed. We move over to the combination of two or more types of motion. And this is what we observe every day. So my dear students, we are going further to look at the combination of two or more types of motion. Combination of two or more 
types of motion. Two or more types of motion. Please follow my writing. Okay. The first example, something you enjoy always, which is matching. I've told you already during your children's day celebration on the May 27th, students normally match, and then you see as you smash and swing your arms, your arms perform oscillatory or vibratory motion while you are moving forward. That means you are performing oscillatory and translational at the same time. Equally, if you have an inclined plane, something like this, inclined plane, just like a right angle triangle, and you position a cylinder here, something like this, let's call it cylinder. If you allow this cylinder to roll down from this point, it's going to perform both translational, which is a straight line, and then as the cylinder rotates, it performs rotational motion. Equally, in the slide, you can see how the cars, when they try to move across the roundabout or tracing the roundabout, they perform what? Circular and rotational motion at the same time. How does that work? The tire of the car, maybe something like this, if this is tire, as this car is turning this circular part, it performs, the tire performs rotational motion while the car itself is performing circular motion. From there, we are going over to motion in one direction. Remember, at this level, we shall have a fair treatment of motion in one direction. And in this case, there are some parameters we use in discussing motion in one direction. You can equally call it motion in a linear path or straight line. The first item there is position. Repeat after me. Position. Good. By definition, position of an object is defined as the place or point where they are located with respect to a reference point. The, the location of object with respect to a reference point, that gives you the idea of what position. Look at this diagram. If the distance from here to here is 2 meters, and then I can now tell you that object B is located 2 meters away from this zero point. So position of objects are always represented using the Cartesian coordinate system in physics. That is your graph page. It has the vertical component and the horizontal component. The second item is there is what? Distance. Yes, I believe you can see it in the slide. Good. good. Now, students, pay very good attention because I will not only define, but I will be making comparison and differentiating some of these items I have to list out now. So, distance, by definition, distance can be defined as the interval of space covered by an object from one point to another. What do I say? Distance can be defined as the interval of space covered by an object from one point to another. It is a scalar quantity because we do not attach direction or any sense of direction to distance. It is measured in meters. That is the SI unit for distance. Good. The next one, displacement. What do I say? Displacement. The symbol is S, likewise that of distance. So I equally put the symbol for you. This time around, displacement can be defined as the distance traveled in a specified direction. So let's look at what we use to give quantities or movement of object direction in physics. We either talk about the cardinal points, north, south, east, and west. You can equally say right, left, positive or negative. These are what we use to give objects sense of uh, direction. So during displacement, we pay attention to the starting point and the ending point. If an object started here, I call it S1. If it's ended here, I call it what? S2. So the displacement of this object is now delta S, which is S2 minus S1. And then in what direction? If the value is positive or negative, as the case may be. Next item we have is speed. Repeat after me. Speed. And you know from your previous lesson, speed is what? A scalar quantity. Remember, I don't tell you that displacement is a vector quantity measured in meter. Why is it a vector? Because it has sense of direction. We now come to the fourth one, speed. So in speed, the symbol is V, the letter V. Then by definition, Speed can be defined as the distance covered by an object per unit time. 
mathematically v is equal to s over t. What does that mean? The distance divided by time. From here you can get the units, which is meters per second. The SI unit is meters per second. Then we have what is known as uniform speed. That is the fifth item. Uniform speed. Repeat after me. Uniform speed. Of course, it will seek out the symbol of speed, which is V. Already, I've told you that speed is a, vector, a scalar quantity. So, by definition, if during a journey an object traveled with the value of or the ratio of s over 2 to be the same throughout throughout the journey. Let me explain that before giving the definition. Let's say during morning function, students, I believe you do morning function every day, and you are meant to sweep a portion of land which is to be 5 meters, you divide it into one, 1 meter each. Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is 1 meter each. And then you have partition it and for you to sweep 1 meter, it takes you 1 minute. So that means for you to sweep this region 2 meters will take you what 2 minutes. So throughout your work or function, you observe that at each partition it will take you the same speed to sweep that portion. So that's the good idea of uniform speed. That means if the ratio of the distance to time is the same throughout the, the journey or the work you are doing, that speed is set to what? Uniform, you can equally call it constant speed. Then the next item I have is average speed. Now, average speed is written as VAB, which is the total distance. What I say? Total what? Distance divided by the total time. Okay, this is how we calculate the uh, average speed. Then that will take us to velocity. Repeat after me. Velocity. That's good. You are good students. I know you are with me here. Velocity can be defined as the displacement covered by an object per unit time. I repeat myself. Velocity can be defined as the displacement covered by an object per unit time. That's why you can say that your car either speed, that is move very fast or slow. So speed and velocity have something in common. It's about the ratio of how object moves either fast or slow. The formula has not changed. S over T. But this time around, S is displacement and T is time. The unit is 10 meter per second. Maybe by the end of the class, I'll ask you two questions about this. Maybe to differentiate between speed and velocity. So you take note. That will take us to uniform velocity. The same way I explain uniform speed, but this time around, you change distance to what? Displacement. So for uniform uh, velocity, that will be our number seven. Uniform velocity it still be the symbol. If the ratio displacement over time is the same, constant throughout the entire journey of your work or movement, we now say that you have engaged in what uniform velocity. And take note: during uniform velocity, something happens, which I will explain during acceleration. So remind me. Just say, teacher, what was that thing you say you tell us? That will take us to acceleration. Acceleration is represented with the letter A. So by definition, acceleration can be defined as the change in the velocity of an object with respect to time. So A is change in physics. And most of the science subjects we use delta. It means change in velocity with respect to time taking. So delta V over T. This time around, we are going to split the velocity into two. We now have V minus U over T. What does that mean? U will represent the initial initial speed or velocity while v will represent the final what i say final speed or velocity now there's something i told you to remind me which is during uniform velocity or speed there is no acceleration what does that mean since the value is constant constant does not change later on you observe that in mathematics once you differentiate a constant you get zero so during uniform velocity or speed there is no acceleration so when you say that an object is accelerating there is a change in the velocity in the opposite sense we have deceleration number nine retardation or uh, ret uh, retardation or deceleration deceleration 
Remember, I said it's in the opposite sense. The other one was when the object changed its velocity constantly with time towards moving upwards. That means the value has to be positive. From the slope of this graph, it will make it clear. But later on in this uh, uh, topic, or maybe by next, when next we see, we shall look at the graphical representation of this. Then you understand it better. Something like this is positive. That means if it is acceleration, it has to be plus a. But if the object now apply brakes, maybe let me give you an instance. Maybe you, you were coming to school and you wanted to pass the across the road and you saw an oncoming car. You have to decelerate. Hold yourself back, otherwise you will have an accident. That's what some drivers do. Once they apply brakes, your, the car will decelerate. So at that point, this is what you obtain. And if you take the slope of this uh, straight line, you are going to get negative. So for deceleration, you have the negative what sign. The negative test shows what something is coming down. Then uniform acceleration is obtained if the object constantly changes its velocity with time. I will give you the formula for acceleration, which is change in velocity over time. Then, students, so, so far so good. We have been able to look at the parameters used in explaining the motion in one direction. We began with position, from there distance, displacement, and so on. So gather your thoughts as we go into numerical problems and their solutions. What do I say? Gather your thoughts. Everything I have said so far it will be helpful this time around. Numerical problems and solutions. There are solutions, okay? So gather your thoughts as we move into numerical problems and their solutions. We are starting with example number one, and it says during morning function, a student walked 30 meters due east. And then 40 meters due north. Calculate or determine her displacement and direction. So over here, let's do the arithmetic solution. Now, my dear students, in solving questions in physics, I go with this acronym. I call it goal. Yes, I always, I always aim at achieving a goal. All right. So the first one is gather your thoughts, organize your thoughts, analyze, and you learn from that question. So in doing that, from the idea of cardinal points, the, the, the student moved first towards the east. This is my east, and then you have 30 meters. The person started somewhere here, got to this region, 30 meters, and then changed direction, 40 meters, do you not? Notice upwards, something like this. You measure it just, it's a sketch, 40 meters. Now with this arrow, it shows the head, that is why it is displacement. Okay, for us to calculate her displacement, remember I told you that in displacement we pay attention to the starting and the ending point. But in this case, let's complete it first by drawing a diagonal that will join that ending point with an arrow, label it R, then there's angle already made here, call it theta. So for us to find this, you see why? We need to gather our thoughts. We don't apply Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem is something you know already. In doing that, this is right angle triangle. So R square, call here A and call here B. Okay? So R square can be A square plus B square. And in doing this, your substitute is that R square will give us 30 squared. What do I say? 30 squared plus 40 squared. And then when you add, you have 2,500 because of our time, 2,500, then take square root of both sides. So finally, R is equal to 50 meters. This is her displacement. The next one is the direction because we have to calculate displacement and direction. So in doing this, for us to get theta, remember your soca to a part of the organization of your thoughts, tan theta is what? The vertical divided by the horizontal, which is opposite to the adjacent. We are going to have 40 over 30. And then, 0 will divide. So, theta is tan inverse. <coughs> I believe you have already seen this one, so I want to wipe it because of space. 
So you're doing that, I'll bring it down. That tan theta is 40 over 30. They will cancel out. Divide this, we're going to have 1.11, 1. 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 3, 3, 3. It continues. So you just need to approximate. Then theta is tan inverse. Tan inverse of that value, 1.3333. I stopped at for this map place, but the value is more than that. And then when you take the tan inverse, you start, your theta is approximately 50 or uh, 53 degrees. Use your calculator, that's what you observe. So you summarize the answer as this: that the resultant is equal to the value we got was 50 meters, comma. With the angle of 53 degrees along the east or towards the x axis. So let's say along x axis. You can use x axis. So that is the solution to number one question. I believe you understood it. Remember to calculate R, we apply Pythagoras theorem. Then we got that one. Then for you to do the angle or the direction you stand, then these are the solution. That will take us to the second question. This time around, we can observe this movement in the sketch. Here it appears as if it is a loop. So for us to do this, we need to partition them based on the scale they gave us. So the question first says, what is the total distance traveled and displacement of each of the objects in the diagram below? So we write on. You see, after analyzing your solution, you have learned something, that is that L. This L, we have learned how to solve similar question to that one. So here, we now say that solution 2, for number 2 question. I would like to begin with the displacement because it's something I already told you. For that of object A, we now say for A. Displacement of A will now be X, which is S2 minus S1. You can call it delta S. So just let's quickly look at where S2 started. From 0, 0 meters, it ended up at 8 meters. That means the S2 there is 8 meters minus 0 meters, giving us 8 meters. This is positive sign, and that gives a sense of direction. I told you that for displacement, there's no sense of direction. Positive is that it's still moving in the same way, same direction as it started. For that of B, I'll give space here. Then for B, the displacement, so that everything will flow together. For displacement of B, you now say delta S is still S2 minus S1. And this time around, let's locate it. B started from 2 meters and ended up at 12 meters. Then come back, it becomes 12 meters minus 2 meters, giving us 10 meters. I believe it is clear. We now go over to the distance traveled. Come to that of A. Look at how we are going to do it. A began from 0, got to 6. I mark it as 30. Before turning backwards, it got to 4 meters before moving forward again. It ended at 8 meters. So what are we going to do? For a distance traveled, total distance traveled. Distance traveled. Okay? Let's call it S. In this case, we now say that from 0 to 6 will just be 6 minus 0. Plus, from 6 backwards to 4 will become 6 minus 4. Plus, then from 4 to 8 will become 8 minus 4. Let me put it in brackets to avoid the ambiguity. You apply the mathematics 6 plus, this is 2 plus, you have 4 there. 6 plus 4 is 10, then you have 12 meters. So for the total distance traveled by object A, you have 12 meters. Displacement is plus 8. Let me write it very well. And then we go back to the distance traveled for B. Distance traveled for B. Distance traveled. Call it S. So in this case, look clearly. Let's go over and partition it again. For object B, it began from 2. Okay? Go to 10 before turning backwards at where? This is 8 and it ended up at 12. So we start from 2, I say to 10. That will give us 10 minus 2. Put it in bracket. Plus, 
that is from 10 uh, from 2 to 10 then from 10 backward to 8 8 uh, 10 minus 8 then the last one remember what i said from 10 it goes back to 8 then finally from 8 to 12 that is 12 minus 8 12 minus 8 let's add i believe you can see it here so we have 10 minus 2 is 8 plus 10 minus 8 is 2 plus 12 minus 8 is 4. Am I correct? Yes. So this is 10 plus this 14 meters. Positive, no. For distance, there's no need of putting the sign. But for that of displacement, it's important. So I'll put plus sign. That tells you the sense of direction. So my dear students, you have seen how we have gathered our thoughts and applied the knowledge based on what we studied today. So we're now going into the third example. This is the question. A boy cycles continuously through a distance of 1.0 kilometers in five minutes. Calculate his average speed. Let's roll. Solution. In that question, we need to write the information given to us, part of gathering our thoughts. The distance is 1.0 kilometers. And then the time is five minutes. Well, my dear students, remember the system international unit for speed is meter per second. So we need to convert. And then in converting that, you know that one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. And then one minute is 60 seconds. Therefore, five minutes becomes five times 60 seconds. And that will give you 300 seconds. Okay, 300 seconds here. Then we go back to the formula for average speed. V average is the distance traveled per unit time. The distance traveled here becomes 1,000 1, meters divided by the time, which is now in the SI in 300 seconds. 0 will cancel 0, 0 will cancel 0. 3 divided 10 is 3.33 ETC meter per second the value continues that's why we just need to approximate we are going over to the next example here which is number four i believe the solution are clear while in motion a truck suddenly applies its brakes in order to avert colliding with a tricycle and its velocity dropped from 60 meters per second to 10 meters per second in eight seconds what is the retardation of the truck? Remember, I told you earlier on, remember this is number four. I have already told you that retardation is the opposite of acceleration. So, after performing the arithmetic, you should have a minus sign. My formula, acceleration is change in the velocity over time taking. But let's write the information given to us. This time around, the truck was initially at this speed. So, this is going to be our U. So you will become 60 meters per second, while the final velocity in that case is 10 meters per second. The time taken for that uh, break or the time taken for that truck to stop is 8 seconds. So you have 8 seconds. We now come to substitute in the formula, okay? So that A becomes V 10 minus 60 over 8. So that will now take us to 10 minus 60 is minus 50 divided by 8. And then when you divide with your calculator, you are going to have a minus, yes, because 2 here will give you 4. 2 here, 25, minus 6.25. The unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. Other acceleration or retardation. So in this case, the retardation A is minus what? 6.25 meters per second squared so my dear students i will leave you with this last example because of our time but let me just give you a highlight take note if an object start from rest or origin we can equally use a stationary point stationary point its initial velocity u is always zero and in that question, it is clearly written that a car accelerates uniformly from rest, that means u is zero. At this is the acceleration 
determine the final speed after 10 seconds. So you use the formula that A is change in velocity over time. I believe you are going to get 50.0 meter per second and as the answer. So try to do that very well. And then that is what we have looked at today. We have been able to achieve all our objectives, remember? Students, I believe by now we can now define motion because we say that motion can be defined as the change in the position of an object with respect to time. We equally looked at the types of motion. We also saw the two kinds of motion. That's a relative motion and the circular motion. That took us to all these items which we have been trying to calculate because this is a life activity. What we do every day. Objects move, human beings move as well. Then finally, my dear students, the assignment I have for you. Try to do that assignment as soon as possible and you will get back to me. Return your feedback to me. Then I will know that you actually paid rapt attention. Remember, coronavirus is real. And try to engage in physical distancing. They told us at least six feet apart from where your neighbor is. And what we saw today, distance, interval of space. So try to give your neighbor at least Six feet, six feet or two meters. Thank you for paying attention. See you next time. My phone number 070-67-64-5724 or my email address chrishamilton442 at gmail.com. One word. Have a nice day. Bye for now. Mystical High School